My name is uh, Grandmaster Anthony Muhammad. I am a student of uh, Dr. Moses Powell, Soke Lil John Davis, and Grand Professor Florinda Visitacion. Um, I'm, I'm happy to be here at um, this year's uh, seminar honoring uh, the legendary Soke Little John Davis, uh, who um, is and has been a surrogate father to me uh, in the absence of uh, who I started out with, uh, Grand, uh, Grandmaster Dr. Moses Powell. Um, this was, a, was an excellent, excellent um, uh, event, seminar, uh, and what makes it excellent is, is the practitioners that are present. You know, whenever I can get an opportunity to be around uh, professional persons who love this like I love it, uh, it's a blessing and when you see students who uh, who have you know get an opportunity now to you know they're learning and and they get an opportunity to see these masters work you know I'm, I'm I, it's just a blessing for me to see that you know because my my life has been uh, to see and and help others you know in their, as far as their training is concerned so this was a was an excellent event I, I had a good time uh, uh, in fact uh, I plan on having a, a little bit more <laughs> having some more good time you know with respect to uh, the uh, dinner this evening. Um, can you give us some historical points of view of when, you know, how your training started, how you connected with Dr. Moses Powell, and about what years were, were those when you got started? Um, well, my, my first, uh, uh, my first view of martial arts was, uh, well, you know, what went through my mind just now, I mean, my professional, my, my first uh, professional training was with um, in uh, a form of karate where I, I, I gained the yellow belt in. Um, uh, but what came to my mind was uh, uh, first view was you know the the um, uh, Kato and and whatnot. But I, I was thinking about um, uh, Michael uh, uh, Anthony Thomas. Uh, well, basically it was he was called the Cat. And uh, but anyway, it was just it was just some movie stuff, that television stuff that that excited me, you know, when we were very little. Um, and so, but as far as my training is concerned, um, I started out uh, studying um, uh, karate for a minute, and uh, all of this came along with my uh, being introduced to the Nation of Islam as a child. Uh, and as a child, you know. Uh, going to our uh, junior men's class, you know, our boys, the boys training uh, in preparation for men, which is called Junior FOI, uh, and, and Muhammad University of Islam is where I really got my first introduction to, to that. Um, after, during that same period, uh, the, um, the um, karate uh, that I was studying, uh, the in instructor, uh, he he was, it was changed, I don't know how or why, but it was students of Dr. Moses Powell came in, and it was a brother named Brother Leon, who was a brown belt under Doc, uh, was sent to the school to teach us. And uh, from that point, you know, I, I was, you know, just continued on and, 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 and built. But uh, my first real introduction to Sanukis, um, I was boxing. And uh, we're, in, we're in junior FOI class, and I wasn't really training that much at the time. And, and he, I, I beat a brother in boxing in our class because our sport and play was boxing and martial arts. And uh, I boxed and beat him in beat him in boxing. And then he said, "He said you did you, you you got me in this here, but come over here with me." I'm like, "I go anywhere I want to go with you now. I just beat you, you know." So so they, they then it was the martial art class, and they started rolling. The first, I mean, they just started rolling, you know. And you know, me cocky like that, I I did a roll that put me out for the rest of the class, so I said, I really want to learn that, you know, and uh, so that, that was um, uh, my, my first role, and I tell my students today that I haven't seen a rollout worse than mine yet, because uh, no one has rolled out in my class and 
couldn't continue in the class on some level. <laughs> but uh, you know that that's that's really you know in in the very beginning I, it was around uh, sixty nine uh, when we you know w were introduced to it and and then you know sixty nine I was uh, I was actually eleven uh, so so it was. It was somewhere around 68, 69, and then it, you know, it got. It was really it became heavier in the in the 70, 71 is when I really intensified, you know, uh, my training uh, in in the art, and all of it was surrounding the Nation of Islam, and then you know Atlantic Avenue, and we were training on Atlantic Avenue and up on up up in uh, Harlem uh, at One West as well, you know. So uh, as children. As you progressed to be a uh, young adult, and uh, what, what year did you receive your first black belt? And who did you receive it? Well, I, I received my black belt from from Doc, from Dr. Moses Powell. Uh, that was in uh, seventy. It had to have been maybe seventy four, seventy 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 four. Yeah, 74, I believe it was. I mean, I, I really have to seriously lock that down, you know. And how I got how I got it, I had been a brown belt for a while, you know, because, uh, you know, <laughs> we stayed holding rank for quite quite some time back in the day. Uh, and and I had actually missed the the test. Um, I, I was somewhere and I wasn't able to make the test, you know, so you miss the test, you just, you miss, you know. So one day Doc was uh, in the dojo, I'm, it was just myself and another young brother in the dojo and he was walking past from his office going to the locker room and while we were training by ourselves on the mat, he, he said, uh, Anthony, go get a black belt. Now, it was loud enough for me to hear him, but when he uh, he went right into the locker room, he didn't stop to say anything. He just said that, get a black belt. And, I, and he went into the locker room, and I asked, brother, I was with me, I said, did he say get a black belt? <laughs> he didn't say get a black belt. He said put a black belt on, right? So I said, did he say that? He said, man, it sounded like it, but you better ask him again. So when I came, when he came out, you know, I asked him again, you know, uh, I asked him, I said, I said, Doc, uh, did you say, no, it wasn't Doc, it was Master Musa then. Uh, I said, Master Musa, did you say um, for me to get a black belt? He said, oh, I, I can't really say that what he said. <laughs> but he said, you know, did you, you didn't understand what I said to you? Did, you know, and he kind of jacked me up, you know, because he knew he, that I, I heard him, but I just wanted to make make sure because that's nothing to play with. So, in fact, um, I uh, left the dojo and went straight and got me a black belt, right? <laughs> and uh, I came into the class. Um, maybe two days later was a was a class where the the um, adults, you know, were were in class. And when I came in, I'm the youngest youngest guy, youngest black belt, and whatnot now. And you know, you're tested right away, you know, these guys, you know, at that time there was a brother by the name of, uh, uh, he, he was handling Doc's business, uh, but he said, you know, what are you doing with that on? You know, these are all men, you know, what are you doing with that belt on? I said, look, Master Musa said to, for me to put this on, you know, he said, he said what, um, uh, he said, you, he said, okay, all right, fine. Somebody else said it. Somebody else asked. A couple other people asked. And I keep sending them, uh, pointing at doc, Doc's, you know, with Master Musa's location, his office. But nobody wanted to go and ask him either. So what they decided to do, this was my first experience with these guys, I mean like this. He said, okay, all right, all black belts, all black belts, you know, and they called all the black belts together, you know, so everybody else was off the mat. Now they're going to, they're having their own class. But I knew, you know, that it was all about me. You know, it was all about, you know, they really wanted to, <laughs> they really wanted to put me, you know, uh, uh, work me to the point that, 
whatever, you know. But I mean, it, as the children, when we were children in, in this, uh, it was... I mean, we had awesome training, man. I mean, it was just real serious training back then. And in fact, I don't think the adults did the stuff that we did as children. Because, you know, children flying, doing all kind of crazy stuff. So we, you know, of course I hung out with them on all, all that they were doing. And, but they were giving everybody a chance to do something. And I, when I had my chance, I did everything that I could, you know, and I, by um, Allah's grace, you know, I was able to um, show them that, um, you know, I, I guess I should have had my, you know, it was okay for me to have my belt and, and they, they respected me from that point. I mean, not that you didn't get challenged, you know, because you didn't have to get a black belt to get challenged, you know, you didn't have to have, you know, any particular rank, you know, you were going to feel something that somebody, if somebody felt like they wanted to do something with you and to you, they would do it. So we we always had our little opportunities for that type of thing to go on, but uh, that's how, um, you know, I, I got my, my first uh, black belt. What are some of the special assignments? Did you have any special assignments the doctor pointed you to as being a black belt? Well, you mean as black belt? I mean, you know, doc. You know, he taught me to teach like early, you know, before black belt. I mean, I was teaching the children's class as yellow belt, you know, and, and I and it was like my it became my class, you know, in the sense of teaching it. But clearly it was Doc's class and he made sure that I understood that, of course. But um, uh, but as black belt, I mean, I, you know, at just starting off as black belt, he didn't give me anything specific, you know, to do other than, you know, I mean, I was always in a teaching mode, so I, I was always looking to, to teach someone, so that's what I went in and, and I had done. And I started teaching out of St. John's Recreation Center. And, and as things went on, you know, through the years, I started finding out that I was you know, falling in the same line that he was in. And he taught at St. John's when he had first started out teaching. And then I opened up a storefront, you know, uh, actually I opened up two storefronts in 1983. And, um, uh, and I had my, that was my first real dojo that I opened up, you know. Uh, those, in that dojo we had, you know, we did some fantastic things like we had um, uh, classes where uh, no, you know, we had no lights on in the dojo. Now, that wasn't just because I didn't pay the bill, and but <laughs> we took advantage of that training and that time, you know. But anyway, that that's uh, so. You, you talked about the six nine with uh, Professor B. How did that uh, saying that you were a student? With, uh, you were a student with uh, Doc. How did that? transition. Of course, you still was a student with Doc, but how did the training begin with Grand Professor V? The training with Grand Professor V, I mean, well, it started when I was uh, brown, I was, no, I was a, uh, yeah, it was a green, it was a brown belt, and they had a black belt class where Grand Professor V would come to Atlantic Avenue and he would, he was teaching the black belts, and this was the class that Doc set up. And you know, I'm always at the dojo, and I'm I'm there, and you know, and I I don't even think I asked the first time, but I probably looked like I wanted to be in it, you know, just around on the mat. And he he said, Anthony, go, you know, you can go in there with them. And that was the first time that I got an opportunity to work out with um, Grand Professor V. So uh, from that point, you know, I mean, this, he's he's one of the teachers. He's one of my teachers now, under you know, um, my principal teacher who is more than more than a teacher to me like, you know, but he was one of those who he gave us the opportunity to to um, study under, under at various times. Um, so that's that's um, how that started on on the the smallest of levels, which was studying there, because he used to br come in with the with honest, and he was teaching the honest stuff mostly uh, to us at that time in the seventies. I heard you talk about. Uh, uh, I heard you say that you were six uh, at this time under Grand Professor B, but at one occasion I heard you talk about Grand Professor B wanting to promote you. And 
how did that turn out? What is it that anyone called you to, and how did you deal with that situation? Well, yeah, well, what had happened was um, this is during, this is in the um, early, the early 90s when, when you know, um, I had already, we had been knowing, of course, each other for a long, for a long time since then and, and training and whatnot, but I, I never really considered myself uh, like a, like, a student in a ranking kind of way because I wasn't really studying with him like that. You know, I wasn't studying with him to to be ranked under uh, Grand Professor V. I mean, it was just a privilege. I was getting the training. That was that was great. But uh, what had happened was he he had said to me um, one day he says that uh, well he came to to the school and he came with a certificate that that said. Um, it had a ninth dawn on it, and uh, I mean, Doc is there. Doc is in the school. I mean, he he came. He's up in my office in in uh, at When Worlds Collide, and and he was presenting that to me. And I, you know, I did, you know you don't know how to say no. You know, I I don't want to say no, but I mean, I, I I knew that I didn't want for Doc to 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 have a problem with me because I had no you know no desire for it like that but this is his instructor who is a instructor to an instructor to me and he was uh, you know giving me he wasn't offering it to me he was telling me this is what he so I, I, I was trying to get away from us like um well thank you uh, I, I you know really appreciate it. I know I probably sound so foolish I didn't even know how to say what I needed to say but he was so gracious that he knew that I was trying to backpedal and whatnot and he says don't worry he touched me on my leg he says no it's okay <laughs> it's okay and he he um, you know he just got away from saying anything else and he you know left after we talked and all of the good stuff and he came back like about a week or two later and he this one he said uh, what he said to me he says uh, you he says your your um, what you your life experience is worth what I'm doing he says your life experience is it's not you know I don't know he was just trying to make me feel you know understand what he was talking about and he said he was talking about my life experience and what I'm what I what I have given or what I'm doing for the art and uh, he says but here this is your um, this is for you this is your rank here six nine so you know I, I was you know, I was very thankful. I mean, again, I wasn't looking for anything. He didn't have to give me anything. I, to, for me to just have been trained with him and by him, I'm good. You know, because I had, you know, Doc. Doc was giving me what I need, what I needed. You know, and 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 wanted. I mean, because I was in Sanukis. So, it, you know, so that's just how that happened. Um, uh, <laughs> how I, um, you know, wound up with Six Don. But again, I, I did not go through the rank or, or the system of uh, Vijitsu Te in, in the traditional way where he was giving me white belt, uh, yellow belt and green belts and so forth. Um, he, we just trained and, and he taught when I, when I would go to his house or wherever it was and, and from that point um, uh, from that point I mean it was just that was it. It was training, you left and it was done. And this was just a time you know I had X-Men security, I had the school, I was bringing him to the school um, every uh, bi-weekly, every other week he was coming to the school, every week, the alternate weeks I had Soke coming to the school and Doc was always at the school. So we had all of them coming in and after a lot, you know, some years of that, that's when he had, he had done that with me, so. Let me ask you, at the time which you received your sixth die through Grand Professor B, what, uh, what rank had you I was an I was a an I was an was a eighth in Sa, in Sanukis and no yeah I was an eighth in Sanukis and a seventh in Kumite Rudjitsu. Can you tell me how did you what was your beginning with training with uh, Sofa? 
by beginning with, with Soke. <laughs> Let's go back to your relationship, because you're training with Soke and your relationship with Soke. Those are two different stories. But your time on the mat, your time. Well, you know, first of all, Soke was, you know, uh, to me, what Soke was, he was, of course, our champion, but he wasn't our friend. <laughs> Soke was, you know, you, you really didn't, you know, wasn't trying to even talk to him because he just looked like he wanted to hurt something all the time. <laughs> That's just how it was, you know. So I wasn't trying to talk to him. He was a big guy over here and, and raggedy, you know, gee just ripped and shredded here. And I mean, and he just didn't look like the person that just, hey, how you doing? <laughs> I mean, it was, he would teach something on the mat and that was it. But this particular time, how, how I got to know Soke personally, um, it, it was uh, in also in, in the uh, 70s, it was before, this is Atlantic Avenue, uh, I started um, fighting, you know, going to tournaments, you know, um, and when I, going to tournaments was like against the rule, you know, because Doc didn't like tournaments, he didn't like at all, and he actually talked against going.